There's yttrium, ytterbium, actinium, rubidium, a boron, gadolinium, niobium, iridium, and strontium, and silicon, and silver, and samarium, and bismuth, chromium, lithium, beryllium, and barium. Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about how radioisotopes are produced when it comes to industrial and commercial radioisotopes. In this video, we're going to cover this next dot point, which says identify one use of a named radioisotope in industry and in medicine. So it says identify, so all you really need to know is you need to be able to name the use of a named radioisotope uh, in both industry and medicine. But before we start to go into the named radioisotope, I figured we'll go and start to talk generally about industry and medicine and what radioisotopes are used for when it comes to the industry of medicine. So what you see here is just a flow chart of both industrial uses and medical uses of these radioisotopes. And I'll quickly go over them. They're used for energy production, so plutonium is one of the examples that gets used for energy production. So instead of using coal for energy, we can also use plutonium as well to produce electricity. Um, we can use it to take flaws in metal objects. And I'll go over this in a second, how that works. We can use it to prevent food spoilage. We can, like gamma radiation can destroy pathogens, so bad things in food. And that's how we can prevent food spoilage. We can also assess the thickness of steel, so we can see how thick it actually is. And um, we can also detect leaks in pipes. So in this case, it's often used for detection purposes in industrial uses. To see, like for example, the thickness, we can't really, really measure how thick it is that easily without using radioisotopes. The radioisotopes allow us to really gauge that thickness. Same with detection in, in pipes. We can't look into pipes if they're in houses or anywhere else. As if we use radioisotopes, that allows us to check those areas. And yeah, energy production is also another area as well. For medicine purposes, it's often due to detection of problems. Uh, so, for example, we can use it to detect cancer. We can use it to detect thyroid disease. That's IDN 123, that radioisotope. We can use it to detect blood disorders. And this is technetium-99, and I'll go over that in a second as well. And we can also detect disease in various organs, disease or the health of organs, so how good are these organs. And we can use radioisotopes to find out if they're still working at their best ability. So these are just some of the uses. There's quite a few more as well, but these are some of the uses of radioisotopes in both industry and medicine. And now we're going to go over the specific examples that we have to, because we have to have a name. So it says a name named right radioisotopes, so these are actual examples. So we need to have two, one for the industry and one for medicine. So for the industry, I've chosen cobalt-60. That is the industry one. It's produced through neutron bombardment. I'm not going to go over this in much detail, but if you're interested, you can always watch the last video, and that's where we discussed how cobalt-60 was actually produced. But basically, you have a cobalt-59, and you bombard it with one neutron, goes from cobalt-59, which is stable, into cobalt-60, which is unstable, and is therefore a radioisotope. And it's used in industry and medicine. Um, so for industry, it's used to take flaws metals, and for preventing food spoilage, and medicine is used to sterilize surgical equipment. So for detection of flaws in metals, um, what actually happens is, because this is our, here, this is our cobalt-60, I'm just going to call it C60, CO cobalt-60, and this actually emits gamma radiation. And gamma radiation can penetrate quite a bit, but not not too thick. If it's too thick, it can't penetrate. So if this were its normal metal here, it can't penetrate because it's too thick. So it might go into it, but it won't be able to go all the way out through it. On the other end, we've got actually got a film badge. If you remember what a film badge was, this allowed us to actually measure radiation. So in this case, because it's so thick, it won't be able to penetrate that film badge, and we can not see any radiation that is around us. In this case, if it has, these, these are the little black things are actually flaws or holes, or basically just areas that are not perfect. And then if we have gamma radiation with these ones, because these are flaws, it's not, it's not perfect, not super thick, it can actually go through. And then it will turn this film badge in a different color. Let's just say it goes from blue to red. And then for anyone looking, this means we have had radiation. 
So for the people who are checking this equipment, they can see, okay, this is actually flawed metal because it set off this film badge, which shows us this radiation has gone from the cobalt-60 through the actual metal and to the film badge. In the other case, if it's not, if there's no flaws, that wouldn't have happened. It's also used to sterilize surgical equipment, or instruments, and helps to prevent food spoilage. These were three uses. For this stop point, it says you only need to know one, but you may as well know these three uses. Now, on the other hand, we've got technetium-99, M, and this M stands for meta, meta half-life, and that means it has a half-life of about six hours, whereas if it were a different version, if it were just technetium-99, not 99M, it would actually have a half-life of many, many hundreds of years. So this one decays a lot faster. And again, it is also produced for neutron bombardment, and I, we went over how to produce in the last video as well. So if you want to know that one, you would also um, can just look at the last video as well. In this case, it's actually used in, I don't know why I wrote industry, I should have actually wrote in medicine, because it's only used in medicine. And it's used for monitoring blood flow, and for... The, to check, so to detect the health of various organs. So this, we can use this to detect the health of various organs. One of the reasons why is because if we put it in our, so this is our circulation here. Circulation. So our bloodstream. And this here is ours. We can imagine our heart, which is an organ. And because this is a radioactive isotope, it will actually flow just flow around like normal and we can look for it, we can scan, we have like an x-ray kind of thing and we can see it where it is at any time so we can actually trace where it is and if everything is normal then it will look like it's flowing normally whereas if there are any bumps, any problems then this would be not normal so there would be some problem when, with the actual way that these technetium-99 molecules are flowing and that could detect a problem in, in the blood itself. And same with the heart if we have everything normal, then we would get a certain image from a heart, whereas with this technetium-99, if there's like a lump or some other problem with the structure of the heart, then there might be an area of the heart that has, like, so you might say, okay, if this area has a problem like a lump, then you might have technetium-99 molecules everywhere in the heart, except for that lump. And then if you look at the scan, we can see the technetium-99 pieces all over the place, except for this lump, which means to us, it tells us we have a lump in our heart. That's an example. That's the example of how we can use it to see how our organs are doing and how our circulation is doing. And so that was technetium-99. So I hope that was useful. Yeah, for, so for this stop point, all you need to know is the named uses, the uh, named radi radioisotopes and their uses. So cobalt-60, take flaws in metals, sterilize surgical equipment, and help prevent food spoilage. And technetium-99 was to help monitor blood flow, or to see like how blood flows, if it's all going good, and also the health of various organs as well. So I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.